Thank you for coming here on such short notice, Sharpwit. Firebrand has been keeping the Malworth occupied, but he doesn't know how to put it down for good. It's no problem. I'm sure I can assist. Where is he? I assume it's that way. Brilliant deduction, Holmes. How long has he been doing this? Five hours or so. And I needed to go to the bathroom since hour three. All you've done is shoot it in the head? I've literally had no other better ideas. All right, well, let me deal with this. Nobody loves you. If you were an inanimate object, you would be a participation trophy. Nobody cares about your Facebook status. You're so dense, light bent around you. I'd love to stay in chat, but I'd rather have tight two diabetes. Look at those teeth. You look inbred even for an animal. I could warm you if you were on fire. And I am on fire. You don't need some beauty sleep. You need to hibernate. Nobody cares about your Facebook status. <laughs> Jeez. And now, the bill. Again, budget cuts. We can only pay you in an episode collab. Again? You've done this before- Dr. Celestia, honey bunny. Honest apple. So this opens up with Rarity and Spike putting up flyers. I'm so lucky you just happened to be walking past the boutique. Uh, yeah, right. Just happened to be walking past. <laughs> oh, age. The fine line between cute and creepy. No. It's a call for submissions. Fashion contest I'm organizing. A showcase for aspiring young designers. Wow. Rarity jumped very quickly from owning a single shop to extending into the big city and the capital. Now she's hosting her own shows. It's pretty fast, but it's consistently fast. Maybe she's just that good an entrepreneur. The winner of the contest will get to debut their line in the Carousel Boutique. So selfless. So generous. She's totally generous, guys. How much more do we have to pound it in? Anyways, she says that she's going to have three judges in the contest. The third judge for the Carousel Boutique's Couture de Future Fashion Contest is none other than Applejack! What? 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 You already said that, darling. Applejack. You're letting Applejack judge the contest. Not even past the intro and we already see the issue of the episode. I admit, Applejack is an unorthodox choice. But that is precisely what makes her an inspired choice. What? Hoity Toity has expertise in fabric and stitch work. Photo Finish has an artistic eye for shapes and colors. But sometimes we designers forget about practicality. That's where you come in. And she knows how to clean up. I've seen complaints from people that Applejack knows nothing about fashion. Did everyone forget how she dressed up her cake to appeal to the rich folk during the best night ever? Or even better, during Simple Ways where she went full Southern Belle? Yes, Applejack can get practicality tunnel vision as seen in Suited for Success, but she eventually realized she was wrong. This all shows that she's not blind to beauty. She's like Toph. You've got no manners. Excuse me? I've got no manners? You're not exactly Lady Fancy Fingers. Uh. I learned proper society behavior and chose to leave it. Also, practical? Did we forget about Applejack's day off where Rarity had to help Applejack to do the practical thing? To be fair, Applejack is good at helping others be practical. Let the record show, she needs work on self-examination. Uh, I think I might be a little too practical. My closet's nothing but 20 versions of this hat. Ooh, I remember that. That's a callback to... Of all the continuity nods you could have made, you picked that one. A judge must be honest, and you're the most honest pony there is. Ask any pony, they'll tell you. Despite evidence to the contrary, so Applejack promises she'll sleep on it and goes to speak to her family. I'll do it. It sounds like fun getting to see all those pretty outfits. Well, you're the exception in our family, Sugar Cube. You know about that kind of stuff. Uh, since when? I mean, she has a small neck for carpentry, but that's a stretch to compare the two. I could be wrong, but I don't remember anything about Apple Bloom and fashion. If anything, fashion is Big Mac's thing. Maybe in Applejack's eyes, showing any interest in aesthetics means you know about it. That's probably true. 
Anyways, Applejack expresses doubt of her judging skills, but after she helps Apple Bloom with her headwear, she gets a confidence boost. You don't need a fancy scarf to keep your hat on. Now you can see. Wow, that is a lot better. Thanks, Applejack. Sure thing. You know what? I am gonna help Rarity judge her show. I think my sensible every pony take on fashion is exactly what the pony community needs. I'm not seeing anything wrong with this. I mean, Applejack was right about the hat, and it still looks kind of good on her. I mean, I'm still waiting for this to drop. Well, just because she gives good advice to one pony doesn't mean she's a qualified critic. But this is how you set that sort of thing up. The way the episode has been going, it's setting Applejack up as someone who knows what she's talking about. Oh, it's wonderful to see you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> Europeans. Excuse you, only Southwestern Europeans do that. And our Southwesterners do handshakes and fist bumps like the rest of the country. What's your point? Uh, never mind. So, Judge, what do you think? Oh, wow. Uh, that is just wow. These are clothes? The photo is upside down. Ha, <laughs> wow, that was great. So far I'm enjoying this episode. This is, she looks like a disco ball. <laughs> Did they have to roll her down the runway? <laughs> I can't believe any pony would actually wear this. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh my. I faint. What, she's right. <laughs> Pommel is making the point that no matter what we wear, it is a costume of some kind or another. Then why not put her in the jester outfit or something? Or something with the jester theme or motif? That's more fitting than a disco ball. Really, Rarity? <sighs> you know that saying that art is just garbage we've justified for display? Making it really hard to prove that wrong. So we see the contestants and... You guys, this morning on my way here, I heard a bird singing literally the most beautiful song I'd ever heard. Jeez, the voice actors take more liberties than the guys of Funimation. I never understood why random characters in Dragon Ball always had foreign accents. Diversity? It was always German! So, Applejack looks at the dresses and she's not impressed, much to everyone's dismay. I don't think they liked what I had to say. Oh, well, that's why you're here. Fashion needs a healthy dose of practicality now and then. I think you mean reality, but that's a good point. Sometimes you do need a tether to the ground to ensure you're not out of touch. Maybe Applejack was overkill in this regard, but the thought is there. This is weird. The way everyone was reacting, you would swear they'd never heard a bit of a criticism in their life. She wasn't even being mean here. She just said that black dresses seems depressing and she didn't understand the other two. She's doing fine as a critic, it's just everyone else can't take the heat. And it's not even a heat, it's more of a tiny ember. For now. When a pony's old clothes get holes in them, they don't want to go to the store to buy new clothes with holes in them. Wow, looks like Applejack is the one who's out of touch now. I don't get it. But if it sells, it sells. Sure, it looks pretty, but that's a lot of fabric. With the way it drags behind, it'll be covered in dirt in no time. Not if they wear it in Canterlot, or on a runway, or they're at a party, or if they just want to play dress up. Yeah, now we're starting to see Applejack get a big head. Thank goodness I'm here, otherwise we'd have had holes in clothes and dirty dresses. At first, I didn't think I'd be much help, but thank goodness I signed on. Without me, they'd be doing all kinds of crazy fashion-y things. Yeah, I said before that Applejack's vice is pride. She might not realize it, but in many of the subtle and not so subtle interactions she has, Applejack frequently gives off an air that she thinks she's better than everyone else. She frequently imposes her values on others and is stubborn whenever she's called out on something because why should she change? She's already perfect. It's everyone else that doesn't have their stuff squared away. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I was right all along. So yeah, I'm gonna give this a continuity win. So Rarity tells Pinky that she's not confident about the fashion show. You seem a little stressed. Wanna try? Music is very relaxing. If only there was some other kind of outlet for me to express these feelings to my like-minded peer group. <sighs> Much better. So, when is she joining with Temptation? Rarity was originally conceived as the one who is into traditionally girly things. Yes, she's into traditionally girly things, but let the record show she can throw down with the non-stuff. So it's the next day and whoa, that is an awesome trench coat. Dips. 
If buttons could convey sadness, you've done it. To me, they convey waking up an hour early just to button them all. And that's if you could reach most of them. Oy, I'm conflicted about this part. On one hand, Applejack, once again, is totally right. You ever wear marine dress blues? Those have a ridiculous amount of buttons and pockets that you're not allowed to use, and it's frustrating as heck to put them on. I can't believe people actually used to fight in those. On the other hand, dude, you would have to be blind to think the marine dress blues don't look cool. I'm more into green. Honestly, I mostly don't blame Applejack for this snap fool. I honestly blame Rarity. Did she not tell the designers that what Applejack is giving was merely advice and they don't have to follow it? I understand the feeling. Sometimes people are doormats when it comes to criticism and that we believe that all criticism, even contradictory ones, are valid. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's the reality. Sometimes people state their opinions with such a confident, authoritative tone that you're compelled to not say anything back. Charisma is a dangerous weapon. Freaking Bart. But yes, we see this exemplifies as Applejack's dominant personality is very much shutting down the others. Oh, they're perfect! Who cares if it's stitched perfectly? You don't need feathers on your head! Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah, destruction of someone's work is crossing a line. And here's the tricky part. Technically, Applejack is still offering constructive criticism. She's stating what she believes to be wrong with the art and is offering tips on how to improve. You can give constructive criticism rudely, just as you can give destructive criticism politely. But in the end, a rude tone yields the same result as destructive criticism, being the destruction of confidence and motivation. I would say this is literally destructive criticism. You know how long it takes to sue and suing individual feathers? When she destroyed that hat, I gasped and choked. Ooh, both good choices. No, there is no choice. They're the exact same belt. Uh, this is so silly. Fashion is ridiculous. Oh, consider that line crossed. So the judges leaves, as do the contestants, and Applejack is sticking by her story that she's just being honest. Huh. I think I might like where this story is going. We'll see, but first we have to get Rarity and Heartbreak and having to cancel something she was doing out of the kindness of her heart. And it's all Applejack's fault! Mostly her fault. You didn't give her much direction and you were the one who brought her up, which could be the equivalent of asking a random person from a street to be a judge. I would say 70-30. But again, Applejack insists that she's not gonna lie about her opinion. And hilariously fast, Rarity takes her to someone named Strawberry Sunrise, who hates apples. What? Applejack gets very sick mad about this opinion, demanding an apology. And this next moment is glorious. Well, that's fine if she doesn't like them. But if she knew how hard we worked to make our apples perfect, maybe she wouldn't be so mean about it. And learning has occurred! I really love this message. Yes, it is good to give an honest opinion, but there's a difference between being honest and being blunt. Or as my homeboy Dr. Emerson Egrick says, you can be right, but wrong at the top of your voice. Just because you may be right, doesn't mean you're entitled to be a dick about it. It doesn't matter if you're right. People will dismiss you if you communicate harshly. It's fun watching that critic give those guys a what for until they trash something that you love or value. And I know some people are just gonna say something like, they just can't handle the truth. The real world is in gumdrops and rainbows. To those people I say, yeah, you're right. And you're not helping. If you can't figure out a way to communicate your suggestions in a way that helps people actually receive it, that's not on them, that's on you. If they don't receive the message because you refuse to change the way that you speak to people, then who's really being the stubborn fool here? are a stubborn fool. <laughs> oh, you're the stubborn fool! And we saw examples of people falling into that and falling hard and painfully. Unfortunately for Applejack, she never considered that as much as she has to be critical, there are limits to how harsh she can be in that. For me, the moment when she went out and actively destroyed all the hard work of those young designers crossed that line by miles. She pretty much jumped rope on that line. Yes, you need to sometimes be harsh if someone refuses to respond to normal words, but at the same time be considerate and be more constructive and offer some valid pointers. What Applejack did for me was the equivalent of an art critic jumping on a stage and cutting the paintings with knives during art opening, because they think it's ridiculous. I mean, those guys can be mean, but not that mean. 
I still think it's kind of funny that Rarity knew very quickly how to handle Applejack's attitude. Usually the episodes like to drag out the solution, but nope. Rarity just goes, hey, you're a jerk and I'm gonna show you why. And we're actually getting the moral delivered surprisingly early in the episode. Anyways, Applejack resolves to fix her mistake as she do. I need to get some of these. It's the only way to travel. No joke, just funny. So Applejack gathers everyone and apologizes for her aggressive critiques. So, you don't think fashion is ridiculous? Uh, well, I... Uh... Okay, episode. This is a very important moment. A lot of goodwill up to now. Many other episodes and even other cartoons blow it at this point. Let's see what you got. I still don't understand it, but I appreciate how much it means to y'all and how much hard work you put into it. And it's good! The episode could have very easily said that Applejack believes fashion is great and rainbows and sunshine and blah. But no, she still stays true to herself and says that she doesn't like it. But the difference? She was respectful about her opinion. What's the point fight deduction for? I ain't telling. You know that's not being constructive, right? Do as I say, not as I do. Though, I do want to make a point about aggressive critique. There are times when it is necessary. Let's take an example, Gordon Ramsay. If you look at his work, Gordon never starts out with the aggressive critique. It's always a snowball. No, 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 no. don't with me. And if you look at the way he treats kids, he is never aggressive with them. And this is the guy who built an empire off of an aggressive image. Aggressive critique is a tool in the toolbox. There are situations which call for it. It's not something to bring out immediately. If the artist refuses to listen to respect or if the matters of life and death, even then you still have to wonder if giving the critique is worth it. Let's all remember how Gordon Ramsay walked out of Amy's baking company because he quickly realized that no matter what he said, they wouldn't listen. I wish I could give a clear answer to this, but it's ultimately going to come down to a case by case basis of if you believe the other person can change. Another similar critic is Angry Joe, who pretty much made him being angry and aggressive critic as his branding. However, it doesn't mean he shouts in every review he does. If anything, he does so if the game is absolutely terrible. And as a matter of fact, he also does something similar to Applejack did and outright shouts that something is just bad, sometimes even starts the video from it. He don't it up! But the big difference is that he follows such statements with pointers and reasons why this is bad, instead of just saying, that's ridiculous. So as much as he is aggressive, he is constructive. And part of it is also made for entertainment, since raging gamers are nearly always entertaining. So part of his image is for entertainment, but partially it is also due to his huge disappointment in the quality, because you can tell he cares about the medium. He's doing it from the place of love, and it's easy to see he's being sincere about it, especially when he knows it's possible to make a shiny gems like Witcher or Warframe, games he personally praises, and then had to review something of an opposite spectrum of quality being made as cash grabs. Anyways, Applejack goes up and set up the stage. Ah. What the Tartarus was that noise? Do you really want to know the answer? Oh my gosh, AJ looks absolutely adorable in a ponytail. Uh, pony? Yeah, yeah, I realized at the moment I said it. Leaving, this was all coming down. You can thank Applejack. She literally did it all by herself. I don't think that word means what you think it means. Who killed her father? Was it the six-hoofed man? I don't think that joke works. But she said the thing. I have to make a joke about it. You really don't. But the show goes off without a hitch. Everyone sees pretty dresses. Everyone is happy. Sorry, but I couldn't pick just one. They all did great, and in my opinion, they all deserve to win. And I agree. I told you your perspective would be beneficial. It just needed to ruin everything first, and that was Honest Apple. To be honest, I actually didn't watch this episode when it first came out because everyone told me it was horrible. But now that I've seen it, I don't get where the complaints are coming from because I really like it. It was incredibly funny, the message is important and sticks the landing, and everyone was totally in character throughout. Whenever a piece of art talks about critique, it's rarely done well. Sometimes people do it well, but many times they do not, even within this very show. So to see this episode tackle the issue and do it justice is worthy of applause. Yeah, there were some uncomfortable moments and the premise is admittedly a little contrived, but those are small beans compared to what I think is a fantastic episode.
as much as I lightened up on the episode, I did so only a little and still think in this season this was the weakest one. Not on pair with rubbish like Spike at your servers or Cards Before the Police, because this one had some enjoyable moments. However, I stand by my opinion that one or two good deeds doesn't redeem an overall thing. As much as this gives some good morals about critiquing, in my opinion the execution kinda breaks it. Anyone can be a critic, you don't have to be a chef to know if your salad tastes funny, but to be an effective critic, you really need some knowledge on the field. And in this case of fashion, some knowledge of the industry is needed, which Applejack does not have. Yes, she had the perspective of common pony, which is important, but in my opinion that wasn't enough. There is also a matter of the episode making Applejack going into extreme spectrum of honesty with being overly honest and blunt with it. And sadly, not enjoyable blunt like Sugarcoat, but painfully blunt. But I wouldn't go as far as saying this was a character assassination for her as some claim it to be. And there is also a problem of shifting all the fault on AJ's, even though it was equally Rarity's fault at the very least, but in my opinion mostly, for setting AJ into role without her consent or clear instructions what to do. So overall, this episode is still a bottom of the season for me. Well, I disagree with your opinion, but that doesn't mean I hate you. Wait, you can... do that? Huh. I guess we can. Whoa, this is the first taken too seriously where I disagreed with the collab partner about the episode's quality. Well, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Oh yeah, those are some sick burns you did earlier. Why did that work so well? My wolves are very prideful and an insult only hurts if you have pride to wound. So, just don't take yourself too seriously? Yes.